Okay, another episode of the things I wish I knew about money. I'm your host, Camille Smith, and I have a wonderful guest. As you know, it's normally the end of the month, so we have Kurt's Corner. So he's here again for the third time. Whoa, you just like coming back, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's always fun to be here. Always fun to be here. Awesome, awesome. And this is episode 57. Um, this time, it's not live um, because Saturday is Christmas and I didn't want to steal Kurt away from his family on Christmas. So I was like, please, 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 any, <laughs> any other time, <laughs> let's do it. So um, we are recording earlier. However, if you're listening or watching this, I will try to be in the chat messaging so yeah so feel free as for those listening on christmas merry christmas yes happy new year and all that good stuff wishing mm -hmm. you all the best for your family and your loved ones and all yes. that good stuff still waiting for kurt's uh, cheesecake <laughs> yeah i gotta get making that maybe tomorrow Ooh. tomorrow or friday we'll see what happens I gotta okay. make, then i gotta post it yeah we'll see what happens We'll All right, that. so I have to I have to watch. I always see your your notifications on Facebook, so I know <laughs> if I see yours, <laughs> make sure I press it real quick because <laughs> mm. they're like hot cakes. <laughs> oh man, um, let's see. Before we even start, but you know what goes good with the cheesecake? Before we start, <laughs> some sorrow would go really good with the cheesecake. Rumor has you know it that there's some sorrow floating around around here somewhere. I won't say anything though. <laughs> I was talking about it last episode too, like as an example of a gift to give. And I was like, why do I keep giving this example? Because then people are gonna want it. Mm -hmm. And not only that, I um I kept posting it online, <laughs> my social media. So everyone was like, Oh, where's my bottle? I'm like, shut yeah. I shouldn't have done this huh <laughs> but yes 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 you are one of the the lucky selectors that get a bottle so i'm pretty sure it's it good when well. you have cheesecake to bribe people though everybody <laughs> it's good see it's a give and take you know <laughs> um sadly i i have yet to do my christmas shopping so i have a busy <laughs> day tomorrow to figure oh, out i don't shop you don't shop you just make christmas the shopping i don't do christmas shopping no okay no. So, yeah, i think i need to switch into that you know <laughs> and all that good stuff because well no i christmas is about the time we spend with the people that we love oh, and that's what i keep it to that is so is always not getting nothing if she needs something, she gets it. It, it doesn't have to be Christmas. Yeah. In, in this house, it's Christmas it. every day. Ah, oh, look at that. What? <laughs> <laughs> that, that. That needs an alarm because a lot of people are like, what? Hey, there it is. Oh. <laughs> it's Christmas every day, exactly. And you know what felt like Christmas? <laughs> what was that? The stock market. <laughs> well, I thought it felt like the Grinch that stole Christmas. Oh, that was about like, so what? Last time we spoke, the new variant came out and just mash up the whole <laughs> market. Well, my portfolio and market. So I was in a little like, ah, I really got to play defense. 
So for the last couple of weeks, I've been playing defense and also um, finally making the right decisions and being able to um, have great green days. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been executing. So I had to first thank you again for introducing me to futures because I think no, you even introduced me to options as well. So like my gosh, kudos to you. I'm not responsible for whatever happens to you. No, no, no. All those I'm only all joking. Those... I'm only joking. It's good. <laughs> you've been you've been picking up really well. That's good. And, and um, or should we start like that? So I, I want us, this episode will be like about stocks, of course, um, but also reflecting on the year mm -hmm. because I think this year in particular, wow. <laughs> like at the beginning, I felt like I had the hang of things. I was getting it. I was doing options. I was learning to take profits because I was being greedy and I would lose out and just trying to research, research. And now I'm into futures and I'm like, ooh, we. <laughs> but I also know that. Um, with futures as well. My greed takes over me sometimes. And also I need to do my daily charting. I I won't lie, the other week I felt like doing nothing and I didn't do charting or anything and it just was a mess. And I was like, Camille, you have to go back to what you learned and you have to do your due diligence and do your charts to see when you want to exit or how the the market's going. Even if it's like madness, I feel like the way um, September too, September and the ending of November felt like February. To me, <laughs> to me, things just didn't make sense. And I was like, ah, but I am starting to get the hang of it and listening to the, you know, when you have the, <laughs> the devil and the angel, but it's yeah. you, it's, it's, it's Kurt and, and non-greedy Camille versus greedy Camille. It's like, just keep mm -hmm. going. And you're like, no, take profits. <laughs> so I think that's just something that I need to continue to learn and, and just to keep you on the shoulder and say, yes, 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 take profits, take profits. <laughs> and all that good stuff. Nice, nice, nice. I think um, when I think about the year, for me, it was a little bit different, but it, it definitely reinforced some stuff. Mm -hmm. And But with the volatility this year, there was a lot of opportunities to buy companies at really good prices. Yes. Um, companies that were going to be around for the long term that you could kind of hold over, you know, for more than a day or a couple minutes. And and so I I kind of took advantage of those those dips mm. and 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 just bought some more companies that I thought were going to be decent long-term holds, some, some riskier than others. And on the, the trading side, I started off doing a lot of testing mm -hmm. from January. Um, January, I probably shouldn't have done any testing because I had surgery and I was, I was a little bit comatose. So that didn't work out too well for January. Oh, no. But after that, did some testing, did some playing around. And then as the year went on, I kind of honed in on what it was I wanted to do mm -hmm. and turned out to be a good year on the trading side. I don't, um, I don't trade much. I'm not an act. I'm not, I wouldn't even say it's trading. It's more like swing. It's more like well, swing trading is what they would call it. I'm not actively day trading. I don't, that's not my thing. And, and I, I think, think it amounts to being another job, which, yeah. <laughs> 
trying to avoid. <laughs> yeah, which I'm trying to avoid. So I prefer uh, something that you can hold for a few, at least a few months or a couple of weeks or something like that, and then see how it plays out. Sometimes it works out sooner, yeah. but for the most part, it's you know, looking at a few months for that. And that's something that is just a, a complement to the main portfolio. The majority of what I do is still buy and hold and and for the long term and and that's what's paid off the most for me nice and i'm glad you mentioned the um, i heard three uh types of traders or investors and i think we dabbled in it before but i think it's good to refresh uh folks's memory that there mm -hmm. are different type of investors i'll say investors right now so there well, there's are... investors and there's traders they're two Correct. different people true 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 so so there's people. there's me the technically trader at the moment as if you if you ever watch my statuses on whatsapp you would think i'm going crazy <laughs> and then we have um the the guru which is an investor so you mostly do long-term plays which is I feel like even the options that you have, you usually do them for like three months and longer. Yeah, well, three months to, to two years. And then three, what? Sorry, I just heard it. Three years. Two years, <laughs> oh, two, the years. Leap, two years. Okay, two years. so you have the leaps. Yes. If, if, sorry, I'm always thinking of options. So there are, options and stocks that you hold for three months to two years the stocks are normally not short-term positions for me if i buy a stock it's normally a longer term play very rarely will i buy a stock for the purposes of holding it for a month or two if i'm holding it for a month or two it's only because it went against me something came to my attention where i was just wrong about it and i sold it and i've you know probably taken loss on that one but otherwise, yeah. if I'm buying a stock, I will weather the storm in the short term. Any dips in the short term, I'll be looking to add more if I still believe the story is intact. And that's just kind of how I look at it from the equity spot. From options, you know, the I find the the longer term play is a good one. So <laughs> leap a year or two out. For yeah. the right companies making you know if, if your volatility is low and you, you have all the right metrics and then, then that's a good play as well and then the shorter term stuff there's more risk to it there is definitely more risk to it and i try and i try and minimize the amount of exposure and and just you know pick my spots yes pick them wisely i think you had um a recent play that you had uh what like july whatnot that has flourished a little bit and um also i you know did a did a leap as well <laughs> you did which worked and, out well for you yeah but for the longest time i was cussing it <laughs> uh-huh but you have time that and is how, true it worked out to be one of your best plays no it is but um and and I'll I'll give kudos kudos to Apple. I'm 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 more of an Android lady, but I thought like uh, my thought process, and this was this year actually. My thought process was, well, Apple has been doing well for the last couple of years. It only makes sense that I get this leap. And I have like a little leeway for it to get to there. And if it, and most likely it will get there. Cause I think I did like a percentage. I was like, okay, it has to get like, I think last year it did about, I'm gonna ballpark 20%. So I did like some calculations. I was like, okay, um, six months it does this and it does that. Okay, in a year and a half, it should be able to get to this. Boy, did it take a while. <laughs> For the longest time I was cussing, but I was like, no, I'm gonna stick with it. And I have a game plan. 
once it gets to a amount that I'm comfortable with or at the straight price that I got, I'm gonna get something that's gonna be more long-term. So um, I'm almost at my price <laughs> that I want, but of course it did go down a little because eh, everything's, you know, I do know. It, it did very well last week and I was surprised. And then it did pull back a little, but I do, I do have like six more months. So I think I'll be fine. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. I'll be fine yeah and stuff so though like i know you and um another friend of mine they're very into leaps and i'm just like i i, I kind of like i like the short term <laughs> that's that's the beauty of it there is a, there is a place in the market for everybody exactly those that like the short-term rush <laughs> Uh, um, if it works for you, then that's fine. And for those yeah. that, that like the nice and steady long-term appreciation of the market that it gives you over time, there's room for you there. Yeah. And there's room for people in the middle where they don't want the short-term rush, you know, daily. Yeah. And you don't, you know, they're probably a little bit impatient when you say, I got to wait five years for this stock to become something. I got to wait 10 years for this stock to become something. And then <clears throat> there's something in the middle as well. So, yeah. Good old options. I love options. So wait, I think we, I think I, we got sidetracked for just a little second, but the definitions. So a trader like myself, there's day trading where mm -hmm. you, um, that day. So today's Wednesday. Um, today I would have bought a, a stock or an option and I would have sold it same day. Uh, then there's swing traders, which they buy for a couple days, or is could it be a couple weeks? A swing trader, yeah. a couple weeks. Okay, so with swing trading, you can buy it on Monday and sell it on Friday, and you'll be swing trading. Boom, uh, or two weeks from now. Because there's times when you have to hold it <laughs> for a couple weeks because it didn't go as planned. But then you want to sell it um, when it's in your favor. If, you know, uh, there's also scalping. I don't know the scalping too much. I think that's like within seconds. And listen. Yeah, and only very short time frame. It's only like a few could be seconds, minutes, five minutes, but it's a very short period of time. Probably not more than 15 minutes. Yeah, like I'm, I love the rush, but that rush is too much for me. <laughs> I'm not, do well, I guess. Well, most people, when you, just keeping things in mind, when, you know, 90% of people that, that they trade are not successful. So it is a commitment. It is a, it is something you have to make a commitment to. And for those that do it, mm -hmm. they're committed. The ones that are good at it. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was, ha I'm happy that I'm not part of the 90%, <laughs> but it's, it's been challenging for, for quite a while, but I've finally got the momentum. So I'm happy. Um, also there's, so there's day trader, um, swing trader, scalper, and then there's the good old investor that buys and holds for years <laughs> to come. And I'm not going to lie because, so the joke is I have two accounts. One is for my risque, I like to call it, where I'm getting my feet wet in different um, avenues, and, which was our options and futures. And my my uh, safe my safety net <laughs> type of account is more buy and hold like big up amd <laughs> forever <laughs> i'll be forever happy with amd because my gosh i think it's it's gone up quite a bit 
even in our in our portfolio with BCI, it's I'm like investment. I think I'm in like the top six. <laughs> yeah, you're up there. You're up there. That was one of the picks, the top picks of the year. That's a good job. So I'm very happy about that as well. Um, what else? I think are there different type of investors? Would you say? Well, I think just by definition, you're looking at a longer term nature. Mm. Yeah. I think anything can be broken out to subsets, but in general, I think investor is probably the, the best broad term for it. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think the best way to say is it is great, is very great to hold um, for a long period of time, especially if it's a quality stock. Those stocks that aren't as great, there's going to be times when you have to reevaluate your portfolio and say, you got the go <laughs> and yeah. then able to put into something else. I'm still trying to figure out that. I think that's going to be my task for next week, just to figure out what's like my safety uh, account. What is... Um, what's beneficial in my portfolio and what's like my aligned with my my values and what I want to keep going and what just has to go like you served your purpose at that time but you're killing me <laughs> you're, yeah, you're yeah, killing yeah. me and so those are the tough decisions where to put the money because we all have limited capital yeah so that's that's but that takes like you know research and like I like interactive brokers because it gives me a, um, a research section and tells me, oh, you should buy it or you should hold it. It's going to go to this projected. I'm like, okay. So that's that's kind of sometimes my decision. I'm like, you say it's going to go to this? Fine. I will hold you a little longer. But if it doesn't, you're out. <laughs> and I think that's what happened with you as well uh, with certain um stocks so to, to the folks to ladies and gentlemen that are really really like looking at their portfolio and saying oh what the heck just do some research and just look at how it's been performing throughout the year or previous years and yeah just hope for the best <laughs> yeah no you can uh what i what i benefited from this year was that um, my core portfolio hasn't changed much right okay. nice. and because of that i was more comfortable with weathering the storm and, and nothing really changed from that perspective mm -hmm. um i think it it creates it creates a little bit of patience, right? You're not not as worried because you know that you've bought some good long-term winners. And, and but patience is definitely the thing that that comes out is that you know when, when you're seeing the market go down, 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 like you said in February, and you get the dip in September, and we're getting, you know, right now, you know, we're still not sure if Santa Claus is coming to the party or not. But oh, you know, so, oh. so we get <laughs> When you get these these dips, it's it helps to know that you have a solid portfolio because what happens is is that the markets will always shake out the weak hands. Mm -hmm. right? So if, if you just bought a company because somebody else told you to buy it, and I'm gonna go buy that one, and somebody else told you about this, and you did no research and you have no idea why you own it or what's good about the company, then as soon as the market takes a turn, you're gonna sell low. And rather yeah. than buying low. And when you when you know that a company is a good company and you see that they take a dip, then that's a chance to buy buy low and then you can sell high later on. So as much as I was like stressed, <laughs> mm -hmm. it is a perfect time to get um, to buy more and like do dollar cost average. Um, I do um i try to practice what i preach <laughs> so i did do i did get grab some good deals um but i also had my money tied up to other things where i'm like mm, 
should I get rid of you so I could get that and then watch it right up, which is, which has happened and it worked. It's okay. just, what if that other one rides up more and then you're like, dang, I should have kept you, huh? <laughs> so I've been really like, not been doing anything with my safe portfolio. I'm just like, okay, dividends, get those and just keep it moving. And I just, I just, I just want to see it go back to the amount that it should be at, <laughs> right? But I, um, like the Santa rally, I'm excited because I think there's a still great stuff that's going to be happening in the next couple of days, even though um, something that happened that I realized is that what I think they say like a lot of CEOs or even traders actually sell off a lot of things to offset their taxes and I did want to dabble into that because it is the end of the year and we do have to be mindful of what um, stocks what capital gains we get and what capital losses and just just try to be mindful hmm. of the things that what you're doing, especially if you have a non-registered account. If you have well, a tax-free savings account, you're good. <laughs> well, you got some hierarchies there, but there's nothing wrong with taxes. Taxes mean that you're making money. It's better that not better than losing money and not paying any taxes. True. Losses are a bigger tax than profits. And keep that in mind first. But <laughs> I think that it's a good point. You take you got to keep in mind in terms of where can I earn money tax-free where possible? You should still keep it. So if you have a TFSA account, you can put money in there, earn money tax-free, great place to get started. Your RRSP, you can put money in there. You get a tax deferral, which means you'll get some money back. And mm -hmm. then you get to invest that money, let it grow compounding without paying any taxes in the interim. Obviously, when you take it out, you pay taxes later on. But by then, hopefully you've had enough runway to grow the account. And then in your, in your non-registered accounts, there are, you know, that's probably where we trade. Yes. And that's probably where we can still do some, you can still do some buy and hold, right? And so in your non-registered accounts, it's actually very beneficial to buy companies, mm -hmm. hold them. Mm -hmm you know, for an extended period of time, and then you still won't pay any taxes on the gains, right? If, if you buy a company, at least until you saw, right? So if, if you if you buy, you know, like everybody's on Elon Musk for how much money he made or how much he's worth and, he, and his taxes, all he did was buy, buy a stock, yeah, held it, didn't sell it. So there's no tax consequences. True. But then I heard he- That in your non-registered account as well. I heard he, so he bought it, sold it, and then was able to buy back into it at like a ridiculous price, like way less than like any um, normal. Yeah, well, he, he works there, so he's being rewarded as an employee, right? And so mm -hmm. he's being paid as an employee. So I'm sure that he's not the only one in the company that is getting um a better rate on person the stock but i think that's the nature of like you know if you join a publicly traded company you work for one here's mm -hmm. a tip everybody if you work for a publicly traded company it's a good company the chances are they have an employee purchase program where they give you the stock at 50 percent off right Ooh. and if it's a good company which you should know better than the rest of us from working there <laughs> then what's wrong with getting the stock at 50 percent off right? And sure. so think about that for those of you that work for those companies. But for a lot of people, it is a great way to accumulate wealth. Obviously, Elon is at a whole nother level. Like what he's getting is, is obviously a whole nother level. But yeah. those, those choices are available to some of us as well on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was just um, looking for an email that I usually get every year. Um, number one, folks, check your emails when it comes from your brokerage account, because they will notify you um, 
you know, where to find your slips on your year end dates. Um, I did see that they were saying that with a, on a registered retirement savings plan, so RSP, you usually get a RSP contribution receipt. Um, also, if you get have an RESP, so for your children, you'll receive a, like a, a slip of how much you contributed, but no receipts are issued because you can't kind of you can't claim them. And with your RIF, you'll get a T4 RIF. So that's for the folks that are retired. So if you, anyone's listening and their parents are retired and they have their RIF and they're like, I don't know where to get this slip, you know that it's in the brokerage <laughs> account. And also, oh, your tax free savings, you don't have to worry about getting a slip because you don't have to pay no tax. <laughs> And then if you have a margin or cash account, which is a non-registered account, you'll either get a T5, mm -hmm. which is an investment income, statement of investment income, or a T3, which is a statement of trust income. And there are others, but we're only talking- They'll also give you any of your capital gains. They'll give you a full record of that too. Yeah. I don't know the name of the form, but they'll give you something for that. And there's also, oh yes, the uh, T5008, Statement of Securities Transactions. There you so, go, yeah. yeah. Especially if you guys do Forex. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know anything like taxes regard with cryptocurrency. We're not gonna dabble into that one just yet. Oh, our, our tax laws are simple, it's just in, it would be treated as, I think for the average person that's holding as an investment, just gets treated like any other investment. You just have to, you have to declare it that you bought Bitcoin for one cent and then you sold it for 50,000 and you made a million dollars and now you want to pay the taxes on your crypto gains. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please be truthful. <laughs> I know there's, you know, people that want to, find loopholes with the crypto world but they'll find you <laughs> we we our tax system is highly based on the honor system here in canada mm -hmm. and so they expect you to declare any of your capital gains and so that's what they expect exactly <laughs> on that note but ooh, i also wanted to do like a reflection like another reflection, um, and I'll let it know. Andre actually um, mentioned ty type of questions that made me think. Um, and I was like, oh, these are some good questions. But I just wanted to address it to everyone. And I confirmed that Kurt liked them too. Um, just basically assessing your trading or investment strategy. And this is something that I'm going to be like writing down because I do have a book. I do have an investment book, you know, to keep it mm -hmm. around. <laughs> Don't ask me how much I've written in it, <laughs> but I do have a spreadsheet. Having the book is a start. Exactly. And I have a spreadsheet. So I always have my spreadsheet. I'm always like plugging things in just so I can see, um, my gains and losses and there's more gains <laughs> than losses <laughs> that's good that's a good start exactly so one of the questions was um try to look for it geez what are my returns losses so far and i know i i think earlier in september i sh like i told you i was like yeah i have 85 percent uh win rate yay However, you remember those, the two sides? Mm -hmm. Greedy Cam came out to play way too much. And my, I'm going to say average, perhaps, because I haven't calculated it all. My win rate is probably like 65 to 70 with options. And my win rate with futures is still, I think I've lost, I wanna say 
five or six times out of the amount of times that I've played. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> so how I um, calculate it is I um, calculate it for the period of the time that I've been in a trade. So example, there is one time I was literally in a trade for two weeks because <laughs> the market just crashed. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to cash out while it's down. I'll just wait because I know it's going to go up. So I waited patiently. Just how you mentioned patience. I waited for two weeks <laughs> for that money to go back up. So I don't think anything is wrong with recording your overall period um not just like that day that you you entered something but correct me if i'm wrong kurt <laughs> like if that's how you um measure your success rates because hmm. i would i keep track of my success rates by profitability okay so how much did i make Mm -hmm. I do keep track of when I got in and when I got out. Yes, right? you taught me that. <laughs> that, is, that, is a, that is something that I do keep track of. Mm -hmm. And then I also just, and then I keep track of, you know, how many wins do I have? How many losses do I have? And, and then more importantly, um, if there's anything consistent happening, right? Am I constantly winning in certain things or losing at certain things? And then the lessons I learned from that. And so... And that's really why I'm keeping track. It's what lessons do I learn along the way as I'm doing it that that I think I can apply going mm -hmm. forward to make things easier for me. Nice. And yes. So it's been good. It's it's up. Trading is up. Investing is up. So it's a good year. I think the market made it the market made it relatively easy. Like the mm -hmm. S and up quite a bit. And so the S and P's up that much then then things tend to be a little bit easier i i um, yeah and i'm glad i'm glad that your uh success rate is up <laughs> i'll say this so and i always say s p 500 if you have no idea what to choose the s p 500 year to date is up 25 percent there you go so it was rough two couple days ago but it went down like one percent and it then rolled back up again so these are things that you want to consider and to the individuals that don't have a positive return this year it's okay. It happens. It happens. Like it it's is a stressful. learning process. My first year of investing, mm -hmm. it was it was not all roses. I had two companies essentially tank on me as soon as I got in. So Jeez, it just true. it's what but they taught me the most. They mm -hmm. taught me the most, right? Yeah. And that's what it's that's what's important. Except, yes, that's true. Because I mm -hmm. I did have some, in my first year, I'm, and I'm gonna do like a, um, a post about it because I seen it online. Like 2018, I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I was missing out on stuff. 2019, I was barely inactive with it as well. But I also noticed that Quest Trade was taking $25 every time I wasn't active. <laughs> So I was like, whoa. So I had to kind of pay attention. Okay. And then obviously 2020 was when I really like was focused and started studying. And 2021, as crappy as personal life was, the the market like helped me out. He's like, you, you, you were suffering over there. Here, come, come, come. Let's let's help you over here. Cause nothing like money <laughs> make you a little happier with things right to me yeah. to me yes. Um, yeah. but yes this year 
the amount, amount of things I learned and that I'm going to continue to learn is ridiculous. And I do, I, I want to do more research and learn. And I think that's what, what it takes to, you know, to have um, an ideal portfolio that works for you. Once you start researching companies, why you like that company, why you hate this company and you want to get rid of it, or even I like to do right now defense. I've been doing a lot of defense. (laughs) So that's like, if I see a stock that I have that's going down, I will get a put option to offset what I'm losing and and wait for it to come back up and or even I see something dropping like crazy and then I will catch it when it's riding back up because I at least know how to read the charts and know when that it's going to be start going up sometimes it goes really up and I'm like oh snap (laughs) I didn't expect this much but I I'm glad I learned how to read the charts and also understand RSI. I'm trying to get that. What is the one that you use? Bowling, bowling bands. Bowling bands. Bowling bands. I I don't get it yet, but I will. But um, knowing how to read the chart is very essential, I think. And I, it, it takes time. I think the best thing I did was I learned from one type of stock. And just, I was like, okay, this is going to pull back just because of the way it's riding up. And then I started looking at the MACD or the RSI and I was like, okay, I understand this. Now I can read others and get an understanding. But no, no, some of these, some of these stocks, they're unpredictable. I, cause I remember I saw a stock, was it soy? So yeah, I seen a stock. It was like a plant-based type of stock. And I was like, yeah, plant-based. Everyone loves plant-based. Yeah, it's awesome, amazing. It was doing well. And then all of a sudden it just started tanking. And I'm like. That sounds like a penny stock. I don't, it was, it, wait, wait, wait. What's the definition of penny stock again? I like to classify penny stocks as less than $5. It wasn't less than five dollars. It was. It was. What is it? It's a. It's a... <laughs> well, now. No, 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 no. I typed it wrong. <laughs> What's the ticker? Uh, soy the s o y dot t o. Okay. Oh, Sun Opta. Yeah. Oh, they make like um, our foods and fruits and packaged foods. Got it. Yeah. yeah. And I was trying to, you know, be, I was trying to be diverse, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they and, had a rough year. Hmm? They had a rough year. Yeah, especially with their earnings. They met and they beat their earnings. But I remember what you said, guidance. <sighs> so I'm waiting to see what they're going to do. I'm, I just seen there's some articles on Yahoo. So I'm going to read them and see if they are worth the while and see if I just trash it. But yes, so that's that's a certain, see, the way the market goes is it's, you can't predict everything, and especially with options. It can, it can be doing great one second and all of a sudden you blink and then all of a sudden it's going tanking. <laughs> Um, also, I think one of the questions was, am I truly committed to day trading or is it a short term thing? As of right now, I think I'm, I'm comfortable with swing trading. I'm just going to have to learn how to swing trade for a certain time (laughs) of the day and then actually do my, my business. Yeah. The thing I've been doing is day trading is a is a commitment. Yeah. It's a commitment. I wouldn't advise anybody to do 
day trading unless you're going to be willing to commit the time to it. It doesn't, you can't have a day job and day trading. It doesn't work. Um, it, it is one of the, it, it is a job mm -hmm. and you have to be comfortable with that being your job, which is why I prefer, which is why I prefer I, investing as number one, because I can literally do nothing for months on end and my yeah. portfolio will grow on over time. And then occasionally when I have the time, I'll do some swing trades. And I think that's what a lot of people think. They're like, I don't have time to do all this trading. That's all you, Cam. That's you. <laughs> like, I do not have time to look at my phone. I was like, hey, I mean, I have three screens. So I'm capable of doing it. Sometimes it gets a little, you know, intense. <laughs> Especially during our meetings. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just is, let's just say during meetings I have to shut down the program I can't even have trading view on because I'll just be like oh ah, so I want people to think that I'm normal insane <laughs> so I don't during meetings I have to shut down the pro program but it also can't be in a play while I'm in a meeting because it just doesn't work out. So, but I think having a set time is ideal and I'll do that for a good while. Yeah. And other than stocks, are there other ways to invest? I'm pretty sure. There, there always are. is. There, there always are. is. You got the the most world famous crypto emerging as, as a way to invest. Uh, a lot of people have picked up on that for different reasons, and it's obviously in an accessible market, regardless of how much money you have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can you can buy coins at whatever really cheap price, or you can buy fractions of coins. I think now that there's fractional stocks, people can think of what they want to do. But it was something that existed in the crypto world for quite some time where you can buy fractional amounts of a, of a coin, which is what makes it so accessible to other people. And then you got real estate, you have business, you have, you know, some people do art um, and, you know, different, different aspects of, I don't know whether you want to call it business or art. Yeah, yeah, you drew that one. Ah. No. <laughs> you got other aspects of, of art that people will do, or you got the, I don't know if you want to call it investing, but there are people that will flip um, goods, right? You'll buy, you know, goods that have very low distribution. You know, some people do with Nike shoes or with, with mm -hmm. their bags or with purses or whatever it may be, where there's limited editions and people flip those. Yeah. All or different phones. ways to make money. Yeah. Yeah, um, I like those ideas. Those are great ones. And um, I think what a lot of people want to learn is which, which, which ones can they actually invest in with a low cost? And I think that's the issue. Like I know a couple of people that, that are like- Stocks are a good one. Stocks? Stocks are low cost. Real estate is yeah. high cost. Crypto is low cost. Um, and Art's then, high cost too. Um, goods, it depends on what you're flipping, but that's relative. It can be low cost. Mm -hmm. but, you know, a couple hundred bucks, you could probably buy a pair of shoes and flip it for a couple hundred more. And so it just depends on what it is, but people do that as well. Yeah. So I guess the question is, would you... Would you rather, like, if someone was to get second income, um, mm -hmm. would it be wise to get, like, a second job or a side hustle? Or is it ideal to get, like, stocks or crypto for them to be able I'll, to, you know? I'll say this. I, I'm not going to say whether a second job is a yes or no. I think everybody can work as many jobs as they want. Look. I come from the land of Heyman. So, you know, you can have as many jobs as you want and work and work and work. And there's nothing wrong with that for those that do that. Mm. What is important, regardless of how many jobs you have, that, that I emphasize is that is your money working as hard as you are? So now that you have one job, two jobs, three jobs, mm. and you 
earned, you know, your thousand dollars or two thousand dollars? Is it all disappearing at the end of the week, at the end of the month? Or is that two thousand dollars now working for you so that you don't have to work so hard in the future? Right. And so a lot of people, me being one of them, mm-hmm. put in a lot of extra hours for extra money. Mm. But the purpose was to invest that extra money so that in the future, I wouldn't have to work so hard for the money. Yeah. Right? And the money would be working for me. And so there's nothing wrong with the extra job or two, right? Especially if they're paying well. Yeah. And in this time, when you think about it, if I'm a nurse or a doctor, for very good reason, they're putting in good hours or saving people's lives. And they're putting in more than extra hours for the benefit of society. Their yeah. trade-off is that they get more money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they get paid for those hours. Hopefully it's not capped. Uh, I've heard rumors about that stuff, but at, at the point is at some point they're definitely making more money. And, and what should they be doing with that money? They should be putting that money in to work for them mm-hmm. so that when time comes, because when you're working that many hours, it's very easy to get burnt out. Yes, it's true. Right? And so very, very not true. having any money aside that works for you, that, that grows on your behalf. That's, um, that's, that's really where the opportunity is. It's those second streams of income are streams that you don't have to work to get the money. Right? So I don't consider a second job a second stream. Mm. That's just the job category. Yeah. Right? So you have one category that requires you to work for the money. You need to start getting streams where you don't have to work for the money. Yeah. I remember I, I'm chuckling because I remember um a post, I think um some Facebook group that I was on, and everyone was like, Yeah, I have eight streams. I'm doing I'm a mortgage broker and I have my day job and and I'm doing this. I'm like, that sounds like you guys have multiple streams of jobs <laughs> yeah. not multiple streams of income like I ain't knocking you guys hustle but like you want to also be mindful of like dividends or just like passive income type of um streams or passive income type of um resources or things just so you're not burnt out because like the end of the day, if you're doing all those positions and you get burnt out and you pop down and you can't work, (sighs) your money's done in Mm -hmm. in a sense, right? So it is good to think of things that, whether it's crypto, because I know a lot of people Mm -hmm. are talking about crypto. I don't really talk about it, but I will (laughs) bring someone on that will talk about it. (laughs) <laughs> or dividends i really like dividends because it's it i've i've actually yeah for the whole year i've been showing people every month except last month because i'm gonna do that soon every month my the interest that i get from the banks and the dividends that i get from my stocks and i feel like it's a no-brainer <laughs> this like but they even, don't do that true but I, like that's why i want to be i want it to be more transparent and show people that like you know me run mm-hmm. a bank <laughs> the bank is not your friend try to get into an investment that or a stock that does dividends and will provide you passive income so you don't have to you know get burnt out and stuff and there are stocks that are affordable that you'll be able to receive yes it it feels like coins right now but once you keep putting money in you'll be like oh snap i got i got this much like i know someone that used to um because i don't think metro passes are here any anymore they were able to get to pay for their metro pass with their dividends. Mm-hmm. I don't know about y'all, but if I could pay certain bills with my dividends, <laughs> I would be very happy. 
or even if you were to reinvest it and get more more um stocks so you can there's there's options right that's the trick so like that's the trick coins now but dollars and and bills later on in life i don't know about y'all but that uh was it rule of 72 <laughs> i prefer not to have the bills but it's okay Seems like they come with the territory. I know. There's a lot of bills I just want to <laughs> get rid of. But I can't. And I think I think the last one is what's your what's your why? Mm, that's a big one. You can go first. <laughs> I can go first. Yes. Well, my why has evolved over time. Mm-hmm. But I think if I really narrow it down, it's about legacy. It's really, you know, coming from a place where didn't have much money, you know, you know, money didn't grow on trees, as they say, and all these other things that you hear. And so it's really just about legacy, not having to worry about money, right? And and for different people, that may mean different things. But for me, it was just freedom, meaning that I didn't have to work if I didn't want to, right? Get to a point in life in which whatever I do is because I want to do it. Yes. Right? And and that was my why. It was about freedom for myself and freedom for my family. And, And so that's what continues to motivate me. You know, the idea of going to a to a job I hate for for months on end or years on end is not my type of thing right and there's nothing wrong with working i've worked all my life right yeah and so i'm i'm not knocking working but when you're working for can you know excessive periods of time in a condition or an environment where you don't like it and you're also not building it can take away from your your energy yeah (laughs) it can suck the energy out of you because you'll be working and then there's nothing worse than working at a company that sucks the energy out of you and then you're still not putting aside any money to change the situation and and so i really just you know i believe in freedom love supporting people on that journey to freedom and hopefully more of us can achieve it i agree to that um so looking at somewhere you hate and you haven't even put money aside for yourself. And I, I that's why I want to stress like paying yourself first is really the best thing you can do to be able to start becoming financially free. Because if you don't do that, you're just going to be stuck in that rat race and continuous cycle of just not being happy and at times like there's some jobs that actually take a toll out of your like mental health mm-hmm. so <sighs> be mindful about that folks like really even if it's a dollar each paycheck at first just to get that habit of um of saving so you can eventually invest is is the way to go and all that good stuff i and i like your why your why is very ideal um i think also my why has changed this year especially because like when i just started it was like i just want money (laughs) i just want to make some money um but not only do I want to make money just so, and actually it was, I just want to make money so I can travel because that was like one of my things to do. But now my why is to like, not only show people that it's possible to do, even with not having like, even though people think I might have a silver spoon or whatever or, or something, <laughs> But like, even if you have not come from the gutter, because that's the wrong thing to say, but if you started from the bottom, 
Now you hear? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but if if you started from like not having any knowledge about financial literacy and not having any knowledge about savings or investing, you can do it. Yes, I went to school for finance, but I didn't have all the knowledge that I have now to be able to do what I'm doing now. And it just takes time, discipline, and patience. And you have to execute. Execution is my like key word these days. Like without executing or even having a action plan, of course you're gonna be in the same place that you were last year. But I saved, I invest, I researched, I learned, and I effed things up. <laughs> And that's how you learn some more. <laughs> exactly. And then I even made a lot of mistakes and learned, well, kind of learned from them. Um, and they're like, okay, this is my risk tolerance that I can handle. And this is what I can't handle. I need to smarten up and start to see like something's got to give. There are days I'm just like, something's got to give so it, it has to go up like I know what I'm doing like or why am I doubting myself on not taking this um this stuff or 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 not jumping in or like jumping out at the time when I should so yes I do have days where I doubt myself because emotions arise but I do have to take in consideration or just be more emotional intelligent and just get out when or get in when it's the right time when mm. it comes to trading but investing do the research know that no matter what the price is yes you don't want to get at the highest so there's an easy calculation and I do it all the time with like my friends I'm like if you want to get into this Look at the price that it's at right now, times it by, I don't know, 75% if it's 25% down or 80% if it's 20% down and get in at that time. Wait till it gets to there, put an alert on your Yahoo and get in then. If not, just get the thing and hope for the best <laughs> or hope that, but it's a good quality. It's a good quality stock. Hope that next month or next um yeah next month or next quarter you're able to have enough money to continue to put in and have dollar cost average because that's the name of the that's the rule of the game dollar cost average do not time the market but have time in the market <laughs> see what i did there <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Truer words have never been spoken. And I know we're about to, to wrap. Yes, um, yes, yes. I just wanted to say it's the end of the year. Mm -hmm. You've grown so much this year. So I'm, I'm very proud of you and what you've accomplished and how you've grown and in the world of money and investing. And it's just awesome to see that in you. And I'm glad that you're sharing it with other people. It's awesome. Okay. So, Keep doing what you're doing and enjoy the holidays. Yes, sir. I'm going to look out for my sorrow. I got to go make that cheesecake now. Exactly. And, um, and, and then so, we'll, do, we'll do an exchange. Yes. Next, next month. So I resetted the count and everything, but I kind of had technical difficulties again. So we're going to start fresh for the new year. And um, anyone that has, so we're going to have our two favorite stocks that we want. And I want you guys to follow along. Um, I will recommend a paper trading account that you can use. And if you want to practice doing options or futures, I also have another link. I'm not affiliated or anything. I just, this is how I was able to learn before I jumped in to the deep end. And I had my life jacket on, you know. There you go. There <laughs> Always you go. have a life jacket. <laughs> and there, um, and also I once again will have to thank you, um, again for showing me the ropes. 
because it's it's not that hard it really isn't that hard if you actually put your mind to it and do the research and all that good stuff so you know folks i want you to subscribe follow like share all that good stuff and happy holidays i guess the next time oh the next time is in the new year oh my gosh this is the last happy new year everybody yes happy new year um if you guys are watching it you'll see that i'm festival (laughs) and all that good stuff but much love to everyone and especially kurt because he's he's the He's the he's the man. He's the guru, my mentor. Even though he doesn't think that, but he is. <laughs> <laughs> I get around him every time, and I appreciate you. Um, so I just wanted to say happy holidays to you and your family, especially. Awesome, thank you. You want my cheesecake? <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Right? If I make some, you'll get some. Yay! And um, on that note, folks, um, just learn during the holidays love during the holidays and just show appreciation to others that to your loved ones and family and friends and try to volunteer too i'm gonna try that too (laughs) a volunteer right and on that note here's a song Yeah. <laughs>